This next test it actually involves integrals <clears throat> and how they relate to how we can relate an integral to a series. And um, so before we do that, let's talk about, we haven't talked about the graphical meaning, I guess, if you will, of, uh, of series. We talked about sequences, you know, sequences we can just represent those with dots on a, on a graph. Well, <clears throat> here's what we can do for uh, the geometric representation of series. Okay, let's, so let's say we've got uh, summation of the a sub n's. And like I'm just mentioning, um, each of those a sub n's we can represent with a dot. Well, <coughs> the series, you run into a little something else because on a series you're adding up the terms. So how are we going to do that if we've got the dots? Well, what we're going to do is basically just use rectangles for our uh, terms. All right, and so <clears throat> our, uh, of course, we're going to go n equals 1 to infinity. You know, if it starts at a different number, we can start at a different number here. But yeah, what you can do for, for series is think of, so a1 would be whatever it is. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's above or below, but a1 would be here. So what we can do for the series is, well, let's take, uh, since we're adding them up, let's take this kind of as a rectangle, and then the area of that rectangle represents the first term because it's 1 times A1, right? That would be the area of that. So that does represent that term pretty well, that area. Well, A2, let's just say A2 is here. Let's just make a rectangle for A2. And then A3. <clears throat> A4. Okay. And so what the geometric representation of A sub N would be, it's the area of those rectangles. Long and so, yeah, that represent each rectangle represents the term. And so, if we um, <clears throat> sum up all those areas, add them together, that's that's a good representation of that series. All right, now there's an alternative here, another way because if you'll notice here, what I kind of did here is I used right hand endpoints. I could also use left hand endpoints. And that'll be significant. Uh, <clears throat> that you understand that. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. All right, so A1 was about the same, was here. Well, instead of going that way, what if I went that way for A1? Wouldn't that give me that same rectangle for A1? You see what I'm saying? And then A2 went down to around about here. So instead of going to the, well, however you view it, you could go the other way also. And that, and that is significant because it will help us with some other, some other things later on. So A3 would be over here, and A4, 2, 4, and 5. So just kind of using the, the left-hand endpoints to the height or left hand inputs there. Okay. But it's, I mean, you get the same series. So that would be another version of that series. Same series. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, yeah, the next uh, part, piece of our, in our testing uh, repertoire, it's the interval test. So we're going to relate series to the intervals. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what we do, if, uh, if we've got a series, a sub n, um, integrals, 
we do integrals of functions, right? And so to convert from one to the other, um, all we're going to do is say, well, we're going to have an f of n where f of n equals a, a, a sub n. Um, and, you know, we could do it with n's, but typically, and then we're going to convert it to, yeah, make it just f of x, but um, <clears throat> that's how we're going to convert it. So, yeah, we're going to say I've got whatever it is, 1 over 5 to the n. Well, my function f of x is going to be 1 over 5x. That's fairly obvious, but just, just to make it up. Sure, okay. All right. <clears throat> so that's going to be our function, whatever that uh, expression is. That'll be, that'll be the same function, function form. Well, it turns out <clears throat> this is the integral test, right? This is what the integral test says. series, summation a sub n's, is convergent if and only if, so it goes both ways, <clears throat> the integral from 1 to infinity, so this is n equals 1 to infinity, I guess I should make those known there n equals 1 to infinity, so the integral 1 to infinity of f of x dx, so the series is convergent, if and only if the series, uh, the integral 1 to infinity f of x dx is convergent. Kind of a one-to-one -one relationship there. And again, where f, <coughs> f of n is a sub n. That's the connection there. Okay, so it's it's pretty nice. It's convergent if and only if the integral is convergent. And so the good thing about this is, um, <clears throat> what it also means is, if the integral is divergent, so is the series. The series is divergent. So this one gives us both. Test for divergence only gives a divergent. Integral test can give us convergence, and it also can, or it can give us divergence. So. All right, now here's, it's not really a proof, but it's kind of a visualization of this. Okay, so we just talked about the area, what the area represents. What, what does this represent, this interval, that area? It's the area under the curve, right? The area between the curve and the x-axis to be specific. <clears throat> okay, so if uh, we've got this is convergent. Well, all right, so let's say my y equals f of x then has this, this shape here. Okay? So 1 to infinity keeps going, going and going, right? We're talking about that area under the curve, right? That converges. That's my given here. So that area converges. Well, how does the series line up? Well, here is uh, one, two, three, four. Let's draw. Let's draw in the uh, little rectangles here, and let's use the right hand end. Here's a one. Here's a two. Here's a3, here's a4, here's a5. See what I'm saying? Because the heights there are the heights of the rectangles. How does the, that area, may have to forego this, this little rectangle here, but aren't, isn't the series under the curve here? Would the area of the rectangles be less than the area of the integral? minus this one piece because the integral actually started here. But that's just one piece, so we can kind of discard it and then 
Yeah. The rectangles are all below the uh, starting at where at two there. That area is below this area, which converges. So if this goes to a number, that number is using those right is less, right? It converges too. Okay, so that that's the idea. Now, how does the emergent work? Well, let's say <clears throat> instead now my integral diverges. Okay, so that's still still talking about this area here. One to infinity. So we've now determined that, I mean, it looks like the same function, but it's a different function because it diverges, different shape, but that now diverges. So that this area, we cannot calculate it. It goes to infinity. Well, look at this, all right? So instead of taking the rectangles like this, let's go with left-hand endpoints. So A1 would be here. A2 would be here. A3 would be here. Now what have I got? The rectangles are bigger, aren't they? So this area diverges. The rectangles are bigger, so they must diverge too, right? Okay. So that's that's kind of how, not really a proof, but it's, it's kind of how this works. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I did forget one thing. What did I... Uh, yeah, I forgot. <clears throat> I forgot one thing. This might yeah. a little note here. It does have, you know, I've obviously showed it, but your series, your A sub n terms, this series um, must have uh, A sub n, the A sub n's are positive. And decrease it. That's probably fairly, probably fairly obvious that they should be decreasing. Otherwise, if they're increasing, that's that's not going to work. But uh, that is a couple of restrictions there. They they do have to be positive. So this would not work for negative uh, base spins are anywhere negative. Okay, <clears throat> for this integral test to work. All right. Um, So, let's look at some here with the new little test. It's actually pretty handy. Handy thing. All right, so let's use the integral test on uh, the series 1 over n squared. 1 over n squared. Okay? <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, th th those two things do have to be satisfied. Um, <clears throat> positive and decreasing. One thing on decreasing, you know, the, the terms have to go. A quick check would just be to look at a few terms and make sure uh, a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n, right? The n plus 1 term is less than the a sub n term. And sometimes it's more obvious than, uh, than others. Here, in this case, it would be 1 over n plus 1 squared, 1 over n squared. Is that true? Yeah, and yeah. That, the denominator here, if you compare the denominator, sometimes that's, that's the way to go. Because here, you got your denominator is bigger n plus 1 would be a bigger denominator, which means 1 divided by bigger is less than 1 divided by smaller. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, since the denominator is bigger here than it is here, that's less, right? So anyway, that's, we'll mention that in some other, other places too, so get, 
to adjust some of that, but <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Since uh, one over n plus one squared, its denominator would always be there. Making one divided by that would be smaller. All right. <clears throat> anyway, side side note there. Uh, all right. So we're going to use the integral test here. So how how does this work? Well, like we said. This is going to be our, our f of x. f of x is going to be 1 over x squared. So that's what I integrate. 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared dx. See if I can evaluate that. So this is one of our uh, improper integrals. Remember doing those? <coughs> you do the limit as t goes to infinity, 1 to t. And let's write it as x minus 2, right? That's how we're going to do this. Yeah, so it's kind of a limit, integration, limit combo here. Uh, let's see, x is minus 2, so the uh, new power would be minus 1, so this would be minus, minus of x to the minus 1 power. All right, so we've got the limit as t goes to infinity, minus, plug in the t, t to the negative 1, and minus the negative 1 to the negative Let's flip that uh, t over there. So it's minus 1 over t, and this will be plus 1. Right? Zero plus 1. Yeah, we got 1 over infinity, or minus 1 over infinity. That's 0, isn't it? The integral converges. What does that mean as far as the series? It converges. It converges to, yeah. Does that also give us what it converges to? Not necessarily because, you know, remember the diagram here. That kind of gives us maybe sort of a limit, upper limit, but, uh, you know, you'd have to do a little bit. You can get some, how, how much error is involved there. I don't, I haven't gone, gone into that usually, so. Uh, it kind of gives you an idea, but no, it's not the, it's not the, this is not one also. But it does tell me, so the integral converges, so the series also converges as well. Okay. All right. Well, the easy one is uh, also we could use this one for this one, the harmonic series. If you look at the integral, what is that? Very simple one. Natural log of x. Natural log of x. And you don't have to use the absolute value because it's positive. Whoops. That's the limit <coughs> as t goes to infinity. 1 to t, 1 over x dx. And then, yeah, that's natural log. So you got natural log of t. Limit as t goes to infinity. Natural log of t minus natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is 0. Um, what's ln of infinity? It's infinity minus 0. Okay. Divergence, like we just said. We already mentioned that. <coughs> so that diverges. So your series, the harmonic series, diverges. Yeah. So you can say if one diverges, the other diverges. If one converges, the other converges. Okay? All right, here's another one. 1 over the square root of n. <clears throat> Integral test on it. So 1 to infinity, 1 over square root of x dx. Well, that would be the limit as t goes to infinity, 1 to t. And that, how could we write that? x to what power? 1 half. Positive half? Negative half. 
All right, so then our integral is easy, it's just power rule. Uh, add one, so you got the x to the positive one half. Two over one, x to the positive one half, right? One to t. So that's the limit as t goes to infinity of two t to the one half minus two times one to the one half. Yeah? So this would be infinity square rooted. Square root of infinity. Infinity. Minus two. Yeah. Yeah, you square root of infinity, you still got infinity. <coughs> Divergence. <laughs> Therefore, the series. One over the square root of n divergence. Okay? So we've got an example here of two that diverge and one of them that converges and then we'll make another point uh, about that uh, in just a moment. Those are mine. So besides geometric, uh, there, besides geometric, are there ways to determine what other series these converge to? Yeah, that's, we'll, we'll use these here in just a second okay. and make a, another, another type of series based on these, these three, okay? Um, yeah, okay. All right. Some other things you can run into. <clears throat> of course, there are integrals, so we've got all kinds of types and things of integrals. <laughs> uh, integral um, let's do First of all, <clears throat> here I might want to start because there's a, well, we don't really, we, we wouldn't really hit a, uh, an undefined value with this one. Okay, we could make it, <clears throat> we could make it that way, but, um, but for the integral test, all right, so yeah, for the integral test, remember a sub n's all had to be positive and decreasing. Well, if I do n equals 1 here, let's just go ahead from that. If I do n equals 1, I get a negative term. And, and one negative term isn't bad, but to avoid that, you know, sometimes they will start at 2. So you can start at 2, 3, it doesn't have to start at 1. So sometimes start at different ones. But you can still use the integral test on this because now with n equals 2 there's no problem all the the rest of these will be positive terms and they will be decreasing I didn't really point that out on all those others but all those others had decreasing terms and this one is looking like it's decreasing too so uh, <clears throat> anyway and then yeah and that's another thing if n equals 1 we're at a negative and then the next one's positive so that's increasing we need it to be decreasing so to avoid all that, we'll start at two minutes decreasing. 
Anyway, all right. So the integral here, we've got 4 over 3x minus 4 dx from 2 to infinity. So if I do that one, limit as t goes to infinity, 2 to t, how am I going to do this? That one's not quite as simple, is it? But it's not too bad. Everybody see it? You substitution? Let's let u be 3x minus 4, then du would be 3dx. So d over 3 would be my dx, so I'd have limit t goes to infinity, 2 to t, <coughs> be 4 over u, and then d over 3. So it's basically 4 thirds times 1 over u. So that's limit as t goes to infinity. That would be 4 thirds times the ln of u. But let's go ahead um, and throw in the uh, u is 3x minus 4. It's positive. We're talking about positive terms, so we don't need the absolute values here. And then do that from 2 to t. So we've got limit as t goes to infinity. 4 thirds ln of 3t minus 4 minus 4 thirds ln plug in 2, you got 6 minus 4, so it's ln 2. t goes to infinity, so I've got ln of infinity minus 4, so I've got 4 thirds ln of infinity you know, minus 4 thirds ln of 2. What's that going to do? Diverge. Does that converge? Diverge. Diverge. Ln of infinity is infinity. Yeah. So we've got infinity minus a number, so that's just infinity. Diverges. Thus, our series diverges. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that one. <clears throat> one of those, uh... Because calculus is mostly Greek-based, isn't it? Like the Greeks came up with it. Parts of it, probably. I don't know. That's a good question. That'd be a good research question for that. <laughs> I, I, I do not know. Now, do you know who came up with a symbol since you said that part? No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was a question you were asking. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So this is a new tool in our arsenal, the integral test. And you know, it only applies in those certain circumstances. But again, it, it, is, uh, it is useful here. Let's take a look at this one. And, <clears throat> you know, it... Uh, you know, most of them in the integral test section, well, you'll use the integral test, but when we get to uh, a certain point, I can't remember which section, but you will have to decide which test to use. And, and in some cases, there are different tests you can use on, more than one test that you can use on one particular one, but take a look at this one. <clears throat> Series is n squared minus 4 over n plus Two squared. <clears throat> Fairly complicated one, isn't it? Uh, since we're on integrals, you know, on integrals, when we start doing an integral that's not, you know, just power rule or uh, a direct antiderivative, we say always look for what first? U substitution, right? Well, <clears throat> we kind of have a rule of thumb on. I guess you might say uh, 
series too. If it's not an obvious one like a geometric or we'll talk about another one, what you always want to first look for is the test for divergence. If there's a uh, if your test for divergence applies, that's what you want to look for, first of all. Now, for test for divergence, what are we looking for? We're looking for that limit of the n goes to infinity of the a sub n. And if it's not zero, the test for divergence tells me the thing diverges. So there's no, no need to go anywhere further. Well, and that's, you kind of try to get a feel for, for these because look at this. Um, do you see there that's not going to be zero? How do I kind of know that already? For this kind of thing to be zero, what do you have to have uh, that's not present here? Don't you have to have the top the top is less degree than the bottom? You know what I'm saying? For that to be that has to be for that to be zero. You see here I've got the equal degree. So that's a dead giveaway that it, that's not going to be zero. Yeah, this is going to be n squared minus 4 over, that'll be n squared plus 4, n plus 4. <coughs> but divide top and bottom, one way to do it by n squared, you get the limit as n goes to infinity, 1 minus 4 over n squared. 1 plus 4 over n plus 4 over n squared. So I've got 1 minus 0, 1 plus 0 plus 0. That's 1. That's one. <clears throat> and so if I test for divergence, no need to go into the uh, integral there or anything else. Test for divergence tells me since that's not 0, that's divergent. So I wanted to, because I mean we're we'll be talking about you know what tests go where, when we can use what tests, but just wanted to throw that in. Yeah, if you've got an obvious one where you're not going to get zero for that base of the end, that's test for divergence. Don't waste your time on anything else. All right, <clears throat> now does that same thing apply here? No, because that sequence, the a sub n's, n goes to infinity, that would be zero, right? That limit would be zero, because yeah, that's what we just talked about. Top degree less than bottom degree, that's that's the limit of that zero. <coughs> Same goes to infinity. So test for divergence. It's not going to help us here. So what else do we have? <coughs> well, just to go over what we have so far, we have. Uh, Geometric, is that geometric? No, geometric is something to the nth power, an exponential, something to the nth power. Um, <clears throat> test for divergence, you already mentioned that. Is that harmonic? No, it's not a harmonic series. Harmonic series is one over n or a number over n. That's clearly not that. So, right now, the only thing else we have, kind of uh, building our way up, is uh, the integral test. So, <clears throat> must be that, right? So let's look at the integral of 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared plus 1, which brings up another integral that we have, our t limit thing here. What's my integral? Arctangent. Recognize that? Arctangent? Hmm? It's tangent inverse. It's a direct antiderivative. Sometimes it will throw us a bone here and give us an easy, easy one. Here, so all right, so we got the limit as t goes to infinity, tangent inverse t minus tangent inverse one, which let's start with that, tangent inverse of one. What's the tan inverse tan inverse of one? What angle gives me one for the tangent? 
It's where sine and cosine are the same. I'll give you that hint. Pi over four. Pi over four. All right. Tangent inverse is pi over four. Tangent inverse. Now, um, that leaves us. So now we've got basically tangent inverse of infinity. We talked about the tangent inverse, what it looks like, the graph, when we're doing some of these kind of similar things, when we're doing those improper inverse, I think it was exactly there. Tangent inverse looks like this. We got a horizontal asymptote there, we got a horizontal asymptote here, and this way. This one, we're talking about the infinity. So we're talking about this number right here, aren't we? Pi over two. Pi over two. Yeah, it levels off. At infinity, tangent inverse levels off at pi over two. At negative infinity, it levels off at minus pi over two. So if you ever get that one, but <clears throat> yeah, tangent inverse out at infinity is pi over two. So it's pi over two minus pi over four, which is Convergence, of course, that's the answer. So <clears throat> our integral converges, therefore series converges. Right? So there's another example. So they won't always, you know, be be the same. So you got integrals. So whatever integral it is, that's what you work with. That's another example. And actually, we'll probably learn a different way to do that one later on, but integral tests, 